Hey, Happy New Year. My name is Maurice Valk. I'm a 3D storyboard artist in the film industry, and I currently work at Lucasfilm Animation. Uh, I'm the developer of this add-on Whippet GP, and I've made an update so that it works for Blender 4.3, so that way it's compatible with the new version of Grease Pencil, uh, which was rewritten from the ground up. Um, and then everything I'm going to show today that's new with Whippet GP I will then add into the previous version of Whippet GP. So if you want to just use Blender 4.2 to like 3.9, then I'll uh, you'll be able to use these new features, but I'll just have to publish that uh, in the near future. Um, so currently this new version of Whippet GP is just for Blender 4.3 and up. Um, so yeah, let's dive into the new stuff. If you are new to Whippet GP, I'll just give you a brief overview of what the add-on is for. This is a side panel add-on, which you can find here on the side by pressing N. The main feature is that it puts all of the basic grease pencil menus in one place. So here you have layer menu, you have your brush menu, and you have a materials menu. Instead of having to go through and change between menus here, and then if you want to access the tools, you have to go all the way here or click here. So this just kind of gives you a one place to be able to, you know, quickly go and select what you need. Okay, so what's new with Whippet GP3? I've added custom keyframe flipping options for previous key and next key. I've also added an outliner menu here. So this is just a quick way for you to select different objects. It's a very basic menu, but just if you want, you could more or less, if you're just drawing, you can have, you know, you can remove this whole sidebar. You can quickly access uh, different objects here and continue drawing. The layer menu now has the group functionality. I've also added a drop down menu here, which is the same as this button here. So it gives you some more layer management tools. Everything else is the same. The brush drop down menu now functions with the asset library. Um, again, in Blender 4.3, brushes are now considered assets. Uh, this makes it easier to share them. And also if you have an update to a brush, uh, a team of people can more easily access the the updates if they're in a shared folder library. I've added a couple extra quick brush tools here so you can modify a brush on the fly. And the materials panel is the same as before. So if you have a lot of pre-built uh, materials, you can quickly access them here for your brushes. Okay, before I show you the two new operators here for the previous and next keyframe, I'll just give a quick uh, recap of what these other operators do and how to map them to the keyboard shortcut and then from there i'll show you how this works um, and that will wrap up our video okay so the whole point of these buttons are intended to be mapped to a keyboard shortcut so while you're hovering over the canvas you can just draw and then you can use a keyboard shortcut to insert a new drawing um, so if i hit this button it'll insert a new keyframe uh, 12 frames in the future along the timeline. Um, you can adjust this, so if you wanna do 10, if you wanna animate on threes, so on and so forth, um, goes up to two seconds, so you can go up to 48. This is really handy if you're storyboarding and you're not trying to think about timing, and you're just trying to get the drawings in. Um, this is a great way to do that. So if I hit this new button, it'll insert a keyframe at frame 11, and so on and so forth, so I can just keep inserting drawings. Uh, duplicate would work exactly how you expect it to, so if I, draw a little character, um, then I hit duplicate, and then on frame 81, we have the same character here. Uh, you, can also, you can also add multiple keyframes at one time. So if I wanna add 10 extra frames that are 10 frames apart, uh, I can hit this button and it will go ahead and just insert uh, additional keyframes. Clear layers will erase all of the strokes and fills that you have on your current keyframe for any unlocked layer. So if I hit this button, it'll just go ahead and clear everything, uh, but it will ignore anything that's on a lock layer. So that will stay there. Deleting a keyframe will actually remove the keyframes from the timeline. So if I hit this button, it'll just remove that. So again, the whole point of this is to kind of replicate the panel system in Storyboard Pro. So you can just insert and focus on drawing and you can flip between the, your panels and you know time it out yourself without having to actually go through and time out the animation. Speaking of timing, 
this is where the new operators that I've added for Whippa GP3 come into play. The next key and previous key allow you to jump between your grease pencil keyframes. So if I click here, you'll see that along the timeline it is jumping between keyframes. And I've got a couple of different filtering options. And these were actually suggested by two artist friends, which I'll link in my description below. So they give you some versatility in deciding how you want to jump between frames or which frames you specifically want to jump through. So the previous key and next key uh, essentially replace having to map keyboard shortcuts to the buttons here on the timeline. These buttons down here, they work. However, they'll actually jump to every single type of keyframe. So you, if you have object keyframes, it'll also go to that. Uh, whereas here I have GP keys only, so it'll jump only to grease pencil keyframes. Active layer, it'll only jump to keyframes uh, that exists for the active layer and then looping for frames will loop within your frame range Which I'll show you an example next Okay, I'm gonna show a quick demo on how to utilize the previous key and next keyframe properly And then I'll also show you how to map them to keyboard shortcuts So let's say we have a little stick man person here and I'm just gonna move them I'm just gonna give them an object location keyframe so here you can see the character is moving. And then if we wanted to draw, you know, new keyframes, we can hit new. I can turn on onion skins and, you know, you could kind of do your walk cycle like this. Okay. So now you have your character moving across the screen. Um, so basically, if you wanted to just flip through, now let's say if you wanted to do like cleanup drawings or something, you just wanted to flip through the keyframes, you would be able to just do that here. Um, if you wanted to ignore any object keyframes, so for instance, let's say we had, you know, an object key right here, and if we're just trying to clean up on the clean layer, then you can select this button, GP keys only, and if you hit next keyframe and next, you'll see that it actually skips the object key. And again, there's, you know, if there's keyframes for both the object key and the grease pencil keyframe, then it'll jump there, of course. But the point is that you can actually skip object keys. So sometimes if your, your grease pencil is moving through a 3D scene um, and there's no actual grease pencil drawing for a certain object keyframe, you can go ahead and just uh, skip all that together. Um, so that's kind of handy. Active layer will allow you to uh, just focus on jumping between the active layer that you have selected. So here I have my, the active layer is the rough layer. Um, if I delete this rough layer keyframe, this one, uh, if I then select active layer and hit next, it'll jump to frame 40. So you can see here, there are no rough layer keyframes uh, except for on frame one and 40. And I can go ahead and jump just to those. Uh, this could be handy if you don't, for instance, let's say you have a grease pencil object with tons of layers and you actually don't want to add um, keyframes for all of your layers and just one layer at a time. You could lock everything except for your active one, hit new, and you'll see that we have only a keyframe being inserted for the, the unlocked layer. Um, and then if you were to go back through and you wanted to fill your drawings or clean them up or something, you could then go to your fill layer, keep the rough layer unlocked. You could just do GP keys only, and then it'll just jump between there. So then if you have um, fill here, you could then like fill your drawing, jump to the next key, fill your drawing, jump, fill, and fill. So this way, if you prefer not to insert like, you know, 10 different layers worth of keyframes, you could just do it that way, um, which is pretty handy. Okay, so I've kind of reset up uh, my character drawings on the rough layer, and now we can take a look at uh, loop frames. So let's just say I move all of these keyframes over and I've got some additional frames before and after my walk cycle like this. And I can also add some more. Um, 
and now let's say we're at our walk cycle point and we only want to focus on the walk cycle. What we can do is we can change the frame range here. So 26 to frame 65. And now we've got this frame range that we want to loop, loop through. You know, you can hit the play button and it will actually loop like that, which is great. However, if you don't time it out and you have all your you know drawings like far apart from each other and the timing just looks off, we can use the loop frame uh, filter button here. And this will basically allow you to loop through the frame range, just like the play button does, but then using these keys. So here you can see I can hit next and I can watch the walk cycle loop through. So this is very handy if you're just working on a certain, you know, specific character animation and you kind of just want to see a selection of um, selection of drawings and then then you can time them out in your head or you know just by hitting uh, your your keyboard shortcut um, so that's kind of useful and again you can also just have it on GP keys only so if for some reason you have like a GP key here and here uh, I can just skip and it'll just go back to that uh, the next Grease pencil keyframe, um, and then if you if you have loop frames on and you do previous, it'll just stop. You, it won't loop backwards. Uh, I didn't think that anyone would need to do that, um, but let me know in the comments if you would like that to be able to watch it go backwards. Um, but yeah, that about sums up the new previous key and next key. Uh, I'll now show you how to actually map all of these operators to keyboard shortcuts, so you can quickly use A and F. Um, which is what I'm doing right now. So you can see my cursor's over my canvas and I can just quickly jump between all the keyframes, which is awesome, very fast. So to map the operators, all of these buttons to keyboard shortcuts, we wanna go to edit, preferences. So go to key map, then scroll down to you find grease pencil, which is between clip and masking or mask editing, expand this. And then you wanna go to grease pencil paint mode, the primary function of the add-on is to work while you're in draw mode, uh, which is called uh, grease pencil paint mode here. So it's not really intended to work with other 3D object meshes. It's just meant for grease pencil objects uh, working in, in draw mode. And then what you'll want to do is scroll down and at the bottom of the sub menu here, you can add new and then you want to expand this. And then from here, with the add-on installed, you can type in whip it, and it'll bring up all of the actual custom operators. Uh, so here you could do add new keyframe, and then you could go in and actually give it a keyboard shortcut that you want. Um, I've already done this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove uh, the this key map here. So you can see what I've done here for next frame, and previous frame, I've actually mapped them to A and F. So F is for the next one, A is for the previous one. Add new keyframe is Shift F. Delete is Control D. So that'll delete the keyframes for all the layers that are unlocked. Clear layers, so that's removing all your strokes, basically erasing or as if you're holding your fingers on your Procreate on your iPad. Um, that's the same uh, principle there. So that's just D and duplicate and move GP objects, uh, or sorry, and move you know your grease pencil keyframe over, that's duplicate, so that's on Shift D. Um, so let me go back to my window here. I'm gonna just make this 300. So for example, um, I'm going to show you how I just insert new drawings. So with, sh so my, here's my cursor, it's right over the canvas. So if I hit Shift F, I insert a new drawing. If I have a drawing that I like and I want to duplicate it and then draw on top of that, I hit Shift D. And then now we have the same drawing between 155 and 165. Then I can add Shift D, Shift D. So this could be cool for you know quickly doing effects animations and then you can flip through them with A and F. Um, Control D will delete all of the keyframes. Uh, except for lock layers, which I'll explain. There's actually a bug for that with duplicating keyframes at the moment. Um, and then D is to actually clear all of the drawings. So if I hit onion skins, you can see all of the drawings except for lock layers will be deleted. And once again, A 
is to go to the previous keyframe and F is to go to the next keyframe. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I had loop layers on. Um, so that's pretty much how you map keyboard shortcuts. And actually one thing I just learned while making this video is you can actually map the previous key and next key while you're over the timeline as well. So to do that, you wanna to go to edit preferences and let's close this. And we wanna to go to frames. This is associated with the timeline. And if you can see here, we have jump to next keyframe and jump to previous keyframe. Um, and I've actually mapped these to the Whippet thing, uh, the Whippet GP jump to next and previous keyframe. Um, this is a different jump to keyframe is a different operator. Um, but by default, you might actually, you might not even have these. Uh, so you could just go ahead and, you know, do this again, whip it uh, and add or jump to next and go ahead and map it. Um, but if you do have it already mapped, then you can go ahead and update it. So it functions, it, it utilizes these operators and not the ones that are here. Um, this is handy because now I have the same um, behavior as these buttons instead of these buttons. Because again, these buttons will go to every single keyframe here. So see how it jumped to the object key? But I actually have ob grease pencil keys only selected. So if I go back, and now because I've mapped it to A and F, if I hit A, it'll just go to keyframes. So it's handy to actually have it both working on uh, grease pencil draw mode, which is related to the 3D viewport. And then if you have the, um, if you go down to frames here and you actually map them here, then you have that versatility down here too. If you're just, you know, time retiming things and selecting different keyframes, that kind of stuff. Okay. I just wanted to uh, touch base on that duplicate keyframe bug. Um, this is actually a bug in Blender 4.3, and I reported it to the Blender developers. Um, someone actually fixed it, but I'm not sure when it will be released. Um, so I'm sh assuming in a new version or two, they'll have this fixed. But basically, when you have a locked layer and you insert a new keyframe, whether you're using my add-on or you're going to draw animation, insert blank keyframes for all layers, um, sorry, if I go here and then hit animation, insert all layers, um, then it'll ignore any lock layers. So inserting a new, you know, blank keyframe that, that works as intended. Um, however, duplicating a keyframe. So again, if I move over, just go to draw animation, duplicate for all layers, it's actually duplicating a lock layer. And in previous versions of Blender, this did not happen. This shouldn't happen. It should, if a layer is locked, nothing should affect that layer, uh, including inserting keyframes. So um, this is currently a bug. So just keep that in mind. When you're utilizing the duplicate shortcut, you will get an extra keyframe, even though if it's a lock layer. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Cool, so that wraps up the video, uh, showcasing all the new features for Whippet GP 3.0. Again, this is for Blender 4.3 and up. I will do my best to get all of these updates into the old version of Whippet GP, and that will work for, for Grease Pencil 2, which is for Blender 4.2 and previous versions. So if you've purchased Whippet GP on Gumroad, you will now see two different versions. One will be Whippet GP 3.0, and the other one will just be Whippet GP. Whippet GP 2 will be the updated version of the old one. So I'll send out a new uh, message when that's published. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you have any suggestions for features or you know things you'd like to see, or if you run into any bugs, please let me know as well. Okay, see you.